Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here playing some more Warhammer combat cards. Now someone requested that I do a video using Imotech the Stormlord, which I have done in the past. I used a build that was pretty similar to this one, I believe. Uh, this is what I think works really well for me with uh, the Stormlord, but I try to want—I I, want to go with a lower uh, point deck. This is the max number of points, all 199 points being used, and I want to aim for about 150 points. So what I'm going to do here is just take out the Annihilation Barge, which is, which is a pretty massive unit. I mean, this thing is really strong in here, but I'm going to take that out. And then I'll just take out uh, this uh, one as well, so that puts me under 150 points. That makes this deck quite a bit weaker. And if you look at my factions, Necrons are at the top at over 2100 trophies, so the enemies that we face in ranked should be quite strong. So this will be a very um, big challenge. I don't expect to actually win this. But I found that the matchmaking in casual mode is very dependent on the number of points you include in your deck. So um, if I run you know, the maximum 199 points, then I'll come up against a powerful opponent, but if I reduce it to 150, then the opponent I get matched with is so much weaker, uh, which just is not fair at all. It gives me too big of an advantage, so I think uh, for this to be a decent challenge, I really need to go back into ranked mode. So that's what I'm going to do here. 150 points with Imotech, and these are pretty high-level cards, but the uh, enemy that we face will probably be pretty strong. So. Let's see what we come up against, and I'll see if I can make some good use of Imotech's special rule. So we're up against Aunva, and Aunva is quite strong against any Necrons, I, I think, due to his special rule, and that is a level 4 Warlord. Alright, we'll put down the Immortal with Barrage at the beginning, and they've got the Krutox Rider over there and what do I want to put over here we'll put down the the destroyer lord and they just hit me with an outflank and yeah these are these are high level cards this is pretty close to an even match I think um, and look how many tro they have 2200 trophies so it's actually they're at a higher level than me and uh, I think it will be really difficult to actually win this. I'm just going to have to take down uh, their bodyguards and hope to draw out the enemy warlord so that my warlord can attack it directly. But with the Krutox there, it's going to be difficult because that thing can get very strong uh, very quickly with both Berserk and also the Paradox of Duality. That's uh, Aunva's special rule. So whenever they take damage, they're going to be getting their attack power increased and that and whether I go ranged or melee uh, they are going to uh, get that boost however uh, this is only from attacks so that means Imotech's special rule um, deals damage but that will not um, actually cause the enemy to uh, gain any damage from that so we're gonna go with just readying here and we are charging up a strong ranged attack, as well as a decent melee attack. And they are going ranged, dealing a pretty good amount of damage. And the barrage from my immortal is actually helping the enemy Krutox to get stronger. But we do have a pretty good ranged attack built up here. I think we want to go with the melee, perhaps. I'm hoping that the Heavy Destroyer can survive, because this is uh, going to be a whole lot of damage for me. So we'll go with the melee for now. It's going to be painful, because this Krutox is about to get 24 extra melee damage just from that. And we take out the Broadside Battle Suit. Okay, the Immortal goes down. This thing has a big game, Hunter. 43 damage. Alright, we'll put down... We'll put down this uh, flayed one over here. He's got fear, so that will reduce the damage of the broadside. 
Battle suit, they're going ranged. They take down the destroyer lord, deal a lot of damage to my heavy destroyer. And the barrage is also going to hit it, further increasing its ranged attack. Now I really want... This is a... So if they put down something with a precision shot, it could take out my destroyer. Uh, when in one hit, so that is pretty risky, keeping it in the middle. But if I move it over to this side, then it's going to waste its attack on uh, this thing. So I, I think, I'm assuming that whatever they have will have, uh, whatever they deploy next will have precision shot. So I'm just going to move it over to the left to be safe. And that was the wrong choice because they, they had the big barrage unit. So I should have kept it over there. That is a level 3 Barracuda, and could have almost taken it out in one hit. That is unfortunate. Well, what to do here? Alright, we're just going to go melee. I think we're still good because Imotech has a strong ranged attack, and uh, if we save the ranged attack for when he deploys, he should be able to just deal a ton of damage to the enemy warlord. So Anva on the field inspiring up his remaining bodyguards. They're going to deal massive damage here. And I actually only have my warlord and one other bodyguard remaining. So out he comes. And my last bodyguard is another pretty weak uh, unit. This is the uh, Lich Guard with shield. So we're going to put that over here. But I think we actually have enough damage built up here. Let's let's see how much Immotech can do. 191. So yeah, that's enough to take down the enemy warlord in one shot. So Immotech himself is quite strong. So yeah, that that worked out quite well. And it was a pretty strong deck that we we're facing. Of course, the AI was not very smart, and they, as expected, deployed their biggest units last. Uh, which meant that uh, they didn't really get much value uh, out of that Barracuda, which allowed me to uh, win the game. So, um, if that had been uh, PvP, playing against an actual human, I'm pretty sure I would have lost pretty badly. But this is pretty much how uh, Imotech works, and actually I, that's, I think that's the first time I've uh, played a game as Imotech against Aonva specifically, and uh, in that case, uh, I think Imotech's special rule worked quite well because it um, did not activate Onva's special rule. So, interesting matchup there. Um, yeah, going forward with Necrons, of course, I, I want to use all of my deck points, but that was just an example of a 150-point deck. Uh, if you use the Locust Heavy Destroyer, this thing is really strong as long as it has its trait unlocked, Berserk, that makes it into an extremely powerful card. So that's one that uh, I really like using. And uh, this thing is also pretty good to include with the um, with Imotech because it has Scout, so when it deploys it readies, and that also triggers uh, Imotech's special rule. So uh, with the other ones, you can... You, you have a bit of flexibility in their you can just try out different builds. I like going with more small units uh, with a couple heavy hitters. Um, I don't like putting any of the really huge expensive units in there because Immotech himself is already pretty expensive, but I don't know. I've seen other players do it, so... Yeah, whatever you go with, uh, good luck. Um, Immotech is still pretty strong overall, so yeah, I definitely recommend using him. Uh, that's all for this one. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.